Hey everybody, it is the Angry Honey Badger here, and it is in fact time for Patch Notes 612. Yes, that is right, Patch 612. Um, obviously joining me today is no one. Kyle is stuck at work, or so he claims that he's stuck at work. Good one, Kyle. That's a good joke. But you know, it does happen. Um, luckily, this patch is not the world's longest. Uh, it is heavily influenced by ARAM, of course, which is why it's the Murder Bridge patch. Um, but we're going to talk about everything that is happening in this patch. And like I said, it's not the craziest patch, so, you know, but you'll see that in just a second. There's a lot of ARAM stuff. I'll briefly touch that. We typically don't. I'll mostly hit the main and major things that affect all other game types. But in fact, Rip Kyle. Am I right? Am I right? I'm right? I'm right. So Rip Kyle gets stuck at work. Um, but the first champion that is up for this rather interesting patch, and we'll talk, I'm actually going to talk probably more so to the middle or end of this patch about why I think this patch is also this way. Um, there's a few reasons for it. Um, there's two main reasons for it. One's another game, which you can probably guess. And the other one's because of something that happened last year with League of Legends. So first off, let's talk about Corky. Um, Corky saw some quality of changes, uh, changes in the last patch with a tiny bit more damage on his missile barrage the big thing about corky and his changes at least uh, at least i feel why he's getting more changes with the way trinity force is now it doesn't help him it's not great now obviously getting a little bit of cooldown reduction is good but he could rather just use the crit and what the old path was um realistically so the big thing here is I think they're kind of tweaking him to fix him because he just is not as good as he was with the new Triforce. So Valkyrie is going to have a shorter cooldown at earlier ranks, but a longer cooldown at later ranks by two seconds, but earlier it's six seconds shorter. So that's a pretty good change for him. And then Gatling Gun, um, the damage on this is technically increased a bit at all ranks besides at rank one, but the big thing is that it's increased its ticks per second from two ticks to four ticks. So now there's 16 ticks over the four seconds. Um, the maximum shred for 8, 12, 16, 20 armor and magic resist after eight ticks, which is unchanged. At max shred, further ticks against the same target refresh the shred duration. So a little bit of changes here. Helps him shred faster, a little bit more damage. Um, pretty helpful if you are a fan of Corky. Um, should make him pretty good in a few different ways. Also, some item changes to ADCs are in this patch too. So we can take a look at those and see if they are going to be of the good nature. If you know what I'm saying. So hopefully those happen more. The next change that we are going to be having this patch is to Fizz. Now Fizz... Um, so once Echo got kind of nerfed out of being Tank Echo... There's always one champion everyone always looks to and tries to find to be that next. This is borderline broken. You shouldn't be building them as a tank. Fizz was always in that zone and kind of was getting played and would get nerfed out of it um, because he is the next closest thing to that zone besides a Vladimir, but Vladimir's not really super sticky. Um, Fizz is going to be getting some nerfs. So the first one coming in is his hitbox radius is now bigger. It's the same size of Teemo's now, so it's 55 instead of 30. Then his Seastone Trident, the damage over time is the same early, but it doesn't scale up to 8% of the target's missing health over 3 seconds. It only scales up to 6%, so he's not going to be dealing as much percentage health damage um, over time. And that kind of takes some of that power out of him if you were building him as a tank, so he won't deal as much damage there. You'll really have to work on his AP ratios to get that. And then his Playful Trickster is also getting nerfed. Its cooldown is increased by two seconds at all ranks, so you can't do that quite as often, which earlier, all fizzes are going to feel that hurt um, in lane. Not, not being able to dodge abilities as much is going to be a problem. So, yeah, be careful about that. Oh, and by the way, if you like the stream, I'd appreciate it, so thank you. So that's the changes to fizz. Now, like I said, what this is really doing is it's focusing on the tank fizz aspect of things. Um, and Playful Trickster, I apparently they just feel like it's too threatening and it's too offensive and defense and it gives them a little bit too much. So a small nerf there. Granted, one thing I will say about all of the mages or anyone you build as a mage right now, it's almost impossible not to get 40% CDR. Just about every single mage item has a uh, cooldown reduction in it. So some of these little tweaks to numbers post mid mage update not as impactful as you might think because you're getting so much free cooldown reduction with almost any item you buy as a mage. So just remember nowadays, you just basically get free cooldown reduction for kicks. 
By the way, did you get a haircut? I did, and the guy decided to cut almost all of my hair off. It was crazy. Good question, though, right? No, okay. Yeah, so that's what's up. So, um, next up, though, is Shaco. Shaco. So, this one's not really a big one, but the, the big thing here is that backstab displays a separate damage number. So, it now will show the bonus damage from backstab separately when applied. It's really only changed to Shaco. It's not actually a change. It's just more of an, hey, you've been updated on backstab damage. A little change. Um, Shaco's in an okay spot. He's kind of not played a lot just because he's kind of weird. Kind of a weird champion that never really fits perfectly in the meta. Just kind of happens. But um, he can be used quite well if you're really good with him. A lot of Shaco mains are quite good. And, um, you got to look out for that sometimes. But the main thing is if you see a Shaco earlier in, early in the game with Ignite and Smite, which is what you know pretty much all of them take, the main thing you have to do is just remember between levels 1 and levels 4 to play safe. Because he's going to be looking to gank immediately, and if he doesn't get any successful ganks off, he wastes a lot of time, which usually puts him far behind. So instead of accelerating a, a lead, he will just fall off a little bit quicker because of it. So you just got to be careful with that. So if you are against Shakos, that's just one little tip. Just stay safe for those first four or five levels for sure, and don't get caught. Like, if you see him, if he comes in for that gank, you know, um, make sure you stay alive for it, because he will fall off wasting time trying to gank lanes and not getting any more uh, creeps and gold. So, a little tip. Next up, though, is for Syndra. Her Force of Will and her Scatter the Weak ability power ratios are being increased by 0.1. So on Force of Will, the ratio is going to be 0.8 instead of 0.7, and on Scatter the Weak from 0.4 to 0.5. Um, she's been falling off a little bit, but this should help her just a tiny bit. Um, she's decent if you're good with her. One thing I talked about her in Free Week was she will, well, Free Week at one point, not that long ago. Um, she has really good single target damage, but and after a fight's already begun or taken off, like if she doesn't have a good way to deal lots of damage to people, she has issues. Granted, her Q does plenty of damage. Obviously, this is a buff to neither, not her Q, but this will help, you know, when she uses her other abilities in those fights to just get a little bit of extra damage. So um, you gotta be careful with that but she is good so try her out i think she's really fun to play too she's kind of fun to harass and throw balls at people's faces try it out you'll enjoy it i know you will and then next we have uh sun xiao um just general changes um so he got some buffs as we know earlier in the season which were pretty good and that's you know obviously helpful because we haven't really seen him too much um th which is you know how it works but the big thing is, th after post devour and the nerfs they also gave him, he's falling off a little bit. So they're going to increase his base health and his health per level. So he's going to have nine more base health, and then his growth stat on health is going to be five higher. So he'll get five more health per level. So not the world's obviously biggest impact, but it does help him with some durability and some sustain stuff early on too, just because he'll have a little bit of extra health and. It'll give him a little bit more options in build path. You won't have to build in just glass cannon. You'll have a little bit more health behind you if you want to do like the pseudo bruiser build, which actually Zin does a pretty good job with because he's got enough base shred in his kit as it is. So this kind of opens up other venues, I think, for him. Just a tiny, tiny bit, even though this is a very small change just to health. So you got to be careful with that. I'll say that much. Okay? Be careful. Play safe. SS. There's a bug on Syndra. Syndra's had tons of bugs. She was one of the worst champions when they released her. She is the bug master. The Bali bug master. Next up then, and finally, as in the final champion change, at least on Summoner's Rift and all other game modes, um, is for Zed. Now, the Scene Blade. Shadows created by Living Shadow and Death Mark are now marked by a circular team indicator. So, um, the last change is obviously to Zed made him less powerful. Uh, which, you know, probably a pretty good thing since, as we know, um, the Quicksilver Sash is less effective in Cleanse because it's not going to get rid of the Death Mark, um, which really helps put a lot of value back into Zed. It's a good thing because um, he kind of got douched on for that being that way. Um, but now that he is being banned more often and other things, this is some quality of life for really everybody um, for Zed. But he's, I don't know, he's, the problem with Zed 
is, and Kyle talked about this a little bit last time, he's like, Zed can be good and snowball and do things, and that's awesome. But Zed can also fall off a little bit early if he doesn't really get going. He just doesn't really do much. Like, that's totally something that Zed does. So um, I think he's being overbanned a little bit right now. There are counters around him besides, obviously, just getting QSS back in the day. There are other ways around that. Um, peeling really well is one thing you can do. Um, and there's a few other options you have, too. But... Um, I'm interested to see how much more plays Zed gets in the future. We also haven't really seen him too often in LCS play recently. We see him occasionally, but not tons. He's not constant pick and ban. Um, he gets a little bit of it back and forth, but nothing crazy. So um, don't overly ban him. And also, people, stop overly banning Malzahar. He's not as amazing as he was. You should be banning, like, Vladimir Swain, okay? Those are much better bans than Malzahar. So um, just a heads up. Now next, I'm going to take a sip of water. Yep, that just happened. Deal with it. So next up are some item changes, and I actually really like the item changes that they're putting out into this patch. Um, as we know, the patch will always come out the day after they release the notes, so it's always the next day. Um, but the changes coming to the items, first off, we have the Infinity Edge. And I'll summarize a little bit of what they're talking about. So the attack damage on it is being increased by 5, so you just get a little bit more attack damage. What they're saying is AD carries focus, uh, most of them pri primarily focus around a build path that consists of a BF sword and a zeal upgrade, or a BF, a BF sword into some kind of upgrade and a zeal into another kind of upgrade. And that should be your direction you take when you are building up to become a super carry late into the game. Now the problem we're having is the reward of your first couple items, or your first item and zeal, or your first item and then you finished your zeal into whatever, that power spike for the invested goal does not feel adequate enough. So what they're doing is they're giving just a little bit more damage on a couple of items to help make that first power spike feel more significant for the amount of gold invested. Because as we know, Infinity Edge and the other item getting 5 AD is Essence Reaver. Both of those items cost a fair bit of gold and they need to be impactful um, purchases that don't cause you to just buy BF Sword, BF Sword, BF Sword just to get damage. You want the finished item to actually result in a good feeling purchase. And so they're giving it just a little bit more damage on these two to make that power spike feel better. Although that power spike's not supposed to make you a monster like you're supposed to become in the late game. So it's kind of a quality of life change for the amount of gold being put into the item that you're purchased. So both Infinity Edge and Essence Reaver are seeing five more attack damage um, going into them with no cost differences. The other big change, too, to make them even more worth it, and I think they're good already, and they're impactful, are both Lord Dominic's Regards and Mortal Reminder. Both of these will be getting 10 more attack damage, so they'll be both going up from 40 attack damage to 50 attack damage, which is a really, really good thing. Um, these are really, really strong items because of their passives, not because of the raw base damage they give you. Uh, it's really hard sometimes to really think about which one's better, like, feeling like when you want to play a mage and you are looking at void staff versus death cap sometimes one is better than the other it's not just well death cap increases my overall ap and therefore i will do more damage yeah but if they have magic resist realistically the cheapness or the cheaperness of a void staff plus its hardcore penetration is actually going to benefit you more and better and also depending on the champion if your base numbers are better and good and you don't have as much hardcore scaling with a AP ratios. Now, if your AP ratio scaling is astronomically absurd, then in some cases the death cap could be better than just the straight penetration you would get from a Void Staff. But it becomes like, you know, a choice and depends on the character. Now for ADCs, Lord Dominic's Immortal Reminder, depending on the situation, as we know Lord Doms is just getting through their, um, really just getting through their armor and dealing as much damage to people with more health than you. And more reminder is really good if you really need to be against like a Mundo or a Vladimir or somebody who has good sustain and you need the uh, you need the passive to help with that. Then those are your choices between the two. But you don't need the raw attack damage numbers because your already amplified attack damage and abilities are going to be benefiting from their passives. So some people I think shy away from picking up these, which is a really bad mistake to make. These are a lot stronger than what their base attack damage numbers really feel. So yes, pay attention with that. And I did say hardcore penetration, but that's the hardcore penetration of the hardcore penetration items. Literally, Lord Dominic's regard should be called um, HP Dom Dick's regards, really. So yeah, that's what's up. Anyways, 
they have 10 more AD, and that's kind of huge for a couple champions that actually like to buy those a little bit earlier because they can use it with their ultimates really well. Misfortune. And some others. Um, Billswater Cutlass. The combined cost is going down from 400 to 250, and the total cost is going down from 1650 to 1500. Hextech Gunblade and Blade of the Rune King combined costs have been increased by 150 gold. Total cost for both items is unchanged, though. So the same. So those two items cost the same with this item in it. But as we know, to get this first little bit of the bilge water, it's going to be cheaper to get this first part of the item. So you can pick this up a little bit earlier, get the benefits from it, and then you still have the same price to basically upgrade it into your Blade of the Rune King or your Hextech Gunblade. So positive changes for Bilgewater um, as a midpoint when you are in the middle of buying it and purchasing it and where you're at. So that's what's up. And then for Yumu's Ghost Blade, they are nerfing it actually, and they're going to take five attack damage off of it. Um, it gives you a lot of good things as a item. Um, especially with a lot of passive, good passive stuff, like uh, cooldown reduction and penetration and also the active and then just the good base numbers and the way it builds. It's very simple to build. Tons and tons of just swords, long swords, just to pick up something really easily. So um, small nerf to it, taking five attack damage off of it. And yes, that's what's up. Anyways, next is the Rod of Ages, the Hextech GLP-800, and the Righteous Glory. All three of them, well, all three of them are getting the percent mana to health conversion ratio changed from 0.25 to 0.5. So 0 0.05 is coming off of it. They're cutting down on that sustain a little bit. And then on the Rod of Ages, a little bit more changing. The cost of it is being increased by 100 gold. So the combined cost, instead of it being 650, it's going to 750. So that makes its overall cost 2700 instead of 2600. And then, like I said, it also has the percent um, mana to health conversion cost change, just like the Hextech GLP 800 and the Righteous Glory. So pay attention to that. I mean, it's not the world's biggest, but the sustain is basically a little too much once you get a big mana pool. So they are changing that. Now, the next thing that is happening is that they are changing some masteries again. Um, I've wanted to update a masteries video for a while. The problem is they keep changing them and you could make that video every week it seems and that would be stupid. So um, just kind of play these out by ear and see what's happening in builds when I'm releasing those and so on. Anyways, Grasp of the Undying. So the big problem with Grasp right now is it's giving back too much on hit healing and it's being overplayed in the top lane a little bit so the first thing they're doing is actually they're nerfing the on hit um health comeback the healing on hit and instead of it being 2.5 percent of your max health they're taking a whole percent off to 1.5 now and then the damage on hit is actually being increased by 0.5 to make up for it a little bit because they'd rather have you have the damage than the crazy amounts to sustain. So the maximum damage on your maximum percent of health, is instead of it being 2.5%, it's going up to 3%. So little changes, um, kind of a positive buff nerf. So more damage, but less sustain. That's how that one's going to work on Grasp of the Undying. The next change is for uh, Fervor of Battle. The stacks you get per ability cast, so when you uh, cast an ability on someone, instead of getting two stacks per that ability, you're only gonna get one. So an ability essentially counts as an auto now, which in some cases is a good thing because certain champions could string together their abilities faster and or more often than others, and that would cause issues um, or allow them to stack further um, more effectively, which you could just say that that's a benefit to that champion, but this just kind of gives it a more even playing field because they'll be stacking up at least the same rate of one instead of times two if you, they were that much faster. So you have to be careful with that, but that's what it's going to be now. So you only get one stack per ability cast on Fervor of Battle. So Lucian gets a, kind of a small mini nerf, and other champions that string together their abilities over and over. Um, even Ezreal a little bit if he's taking that, but he's typically not. So, gotta be careful about that. Then, there's Double-Edged Sword. Um, same benefits for all, regardless of range. So, no longer has split effectiveness for ranged or melee champions. Now, 3% damage increase and 1.5% 1 per, uh, 1 increased damage taken for everyone. So, that's how that's gonna go. So, it's the same benefits for all. 
effectively it wasn't worth it ever to take it on someone ranged at the time because it just wasn't. So that's a change that you might see it a little bit more now. You gotta be careful with that. And then on natural talent, more ability power and attack damage are gonna be coming in early from this, but you're gonna have less ability power and attack damage per level. So overall it's a little less later, but it's better early. So attack damage at level 1.4 per rank, plus two at rank five. Ability power per level is 0.6 per rank, and then it's plus three at rank five. The attack damage per level is going down from 0.11 to 0.09, so it's 0.45 at rank five. Ability power per level, instead of 0.16, it's gonna be 0.13, which is 0.65 at rank five. Total amount at level 18 is 10 AD and 15 AP, which is unchanged. So it just scales much differently. So it's more early, but it's less ability power and attack damage per level, but it doesn't really do anything. Thumbs up. They're trying to make it more competitive than the sustain of vampirism. So we've decided to shift some of its power to the early game, like I said. So it's basically unchanged, you just get better early, and that makes it better. So that's what's up. So, that is natural talent. And then Veteran Scars is next. And that is going to be a straight up change of health per rank going up by one. Meaning, total health is going to be increased from 9 to 45 to 10 to 50 per point you have in it, which basically would be five. So you get five more health if you're using Veteran Scars, which is not the world's biggest change, but it's five health. So if you have been taking it, you're gonna get five more out of it, which I guess is a good thing. So that's what's up, Veteran Scars. So next up is the Halaling Abyss. And there's some other changes too coming up that that actually affect what we talked about above. We're just gonna gloss over the Hollowing Abyss quick. Bard seeing some changes, so chime rates are down. They're, they're 40 seconds instead of 50. NASA's Q Strike um, stacks per unit kill is six instead of three. Thresh, each soul capture counts as two instead of one. Basically, a lot of the champions that have to do stacking things or capturing things get a lot of changes because they never get to utilize any of those benefit benefits in a shorter game. So, that's what's up. So that's what's happening with those champions. Summoner spells are all getting shorter cooldowns. You can read them there on the screen. Um, once again, it's a shorter game. So better changes coming in to make things, uh, you know, shorter cooldowns and all that. That's much better for that. Mark dash. Uh, cooldown actually is being increased on it. Snowball is actually being smaller to match the visual. Added a glow effect to snowball. So actually that's a nerf, which is good because everybody used it too much. I think. I don't know. I don't really play ARAM. Um, Clarity is getting a shorter cooldown, which is good for that. And the self mana restore and the ally mana restore. Well, your self restore is getting higher, but the mana restore is going down for your allies. Home start for the first five minutes of the game, leaving the fountain grants 50% movement speed buff for 10 seconds. That allows you to get back to lane a little bit quicker and defend. That actually should probably make the matches a little bit longer, so look out for that. Experience pacing. Champions now require less total experience to hit level 18. Champion kills grant less total experience, which is pretty much how that felt before, but at least it doesn't take as much experience to get to rank 18, which will help with pacing actually a little bit more. So that should help a little bit quicker pacing to six, because the first yeah, the first six levels on the Howling Abyss feel like it'd take for friggin' ever. So good change there. Gold pacing is being increased. Champion kill gold increased. All the minions gold are also being increased. Minion gold rewards no longer increase over time. It's just flat amount, but they've all been increased up front. That's what's up. Health packs now give you less health early and less health later and have longer respawn timers. So mana restores down, respawn time increased. At least that's the mana. The health's the same. Sorry, the mana is being decreased on it. So you can't rely on it as a mana pod. Um, so less mana on them, longer respawns less health. Technically less health because respawn time going up. So get wrecked, so less health. Terrain changes. Space between center brushes now extend further. The side area of both outer turrets are now slightly larger. Slightly increase the size of both bases side areas. Okay. Items removed. Dorans, 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 Sweeper, Lightbringer, Orb of Winter, Entropy, and we could Hatchet. Those are all being removed. Oracle's Elixir is different. The Guardian's Horn has been updated to basically be still mildly worthless in my opinion. The Guardian's Hammer is new, which is a health item with attack damage and lifesteal. 
Guardian's Orb. It's also kind of worthless. Refillable Potions. How fun. Poro Snacks. On first turret kill, all team members receive an additional Poro Snack. Oh my god, we can feed more Poros with our Poro Stacks after you kill a turret. So you can have exploding Poros, or, uh, Poros everywhere. It's what everybody's always wanted, right? More Poro Poros? Poros? The big news, though, now that we're past the Halloween Biss changes, here's the bigger news. This is what I wanted to get to. So, remakes. Forward slash, well, whichever way it's for you. Forward slash remake. So, three minute mark, taking a loss, missing player, takes responsibility. Anyways, so if any player DCs or is flagged as AFK for at least 90 seconds, at so the, at the, for 90 seconds at the three minute mark, a remake is available for the match. The exception to the cases are. So it won't always work, but the exceptions to the cases are a first blood against a player's team before they leave slash DC will prevent a remake vote because gold distribution and effect on games already happened. At the three minute mark, all players on the shorthanded team receive a message to prompt the vote by typing forward slash remake in chat. If the vote passes, all players in the game basically pretend that the game never happened and no experience will change, no LP, IP, CM, XP, or wins or losses will be recorded. The DC player, though, takes full LP loss and can drop a game if it's a promo game. So you will take LP loss if you are the DC and you are flagged in the lever buster system. So don't be that person. To prevent abuse of the remake system, Diamond 5 and above players will take a loss when the DC player is in their pre-made. So there is a... Because people could... Um, you could... You know, take advantage of this in some weird ways. If a friend just would take those for you. And um, that's what's up. Anyways. That's the way the system's going to work. I like it. I think it's smart. Uh, I don't think it happens all the time, but sometimes it does. And sometimes somebody is going to, they, I mean, some people do just, they just, you know, they uh, connect late. But instead of letting them connect late, having them, you know, lose out or just getting a remake just is a better use of everyone's time. Especially since you know you're going to be in, game with somebody for or with a team for at least 20 minutes typically it's just good to have the system so remakes are gonna be great this is a good change i'm excited for it anyways i don't know what the hell everybody's talking about in chat but whatever anyways league of legends is what i'm talking about i could care two shits about politics or anything else anyways champion mastery Champion Mastery also now works on all maps, so you can earn Champion Mastery points in pretty much anywhere. Champion Mastery points can be earned in match-made Twisted Treeline games, match-made Howling Abyss games, and rotating game modes will not award Champion Mastery level 6 or 7. Okay, so you can earn towards them, but you can't get 6 and 7 tokens from Howling Abyss, Twisted Treeline, or the rotating ones. So, you still have to do that in Summoner's Rift, but you at least can earn points up through the other ones if you primarily play these game modes. So that's kind of neat for you. All right, bug fixes. We typically don't read through these because, well, there's really no big point that bug fixes. The hop attack speed particles no longer cut off at certain angles. Yeah, that's, it's not that important. Pool Party Mundo busted ukulele no longer jitters on the ground at the end of his recall animation. Ooh. Ooh. Bringing out the big changes, boys and girls. Ooh. Upcoming skins. We have. Okay. Whoa. Weird happening. Okay. Whoa. Dark Star Thresh. Um, I kind of like these skins. And I kind of like the artwork that goes with them. They're kind of epic and galactic and ridiculous, which is a good thing, in my opinion. So we have Galact or no Star Star uh, Dark Star Thresh, and if you're a skater, it sounds even cooler because of Dark Star of the company. Um, and then we have isn't it Dark Star Varus? Right, this is Varus. Yeah. So Varus is also getting a Dark Star skin. 
Um, they're kind of neat. I think they look cool. I haven't really seen them too much in-game. I saw a little bit of them, but they're kind of different, which I like. I would like to see more of these, which is cool. And um, that would be neat, because more of these would be good. I think some other champions could have Dark Star skins that would look pretty badass, in my opinion. Yeah, I can think of a few. Because they just, they're so freaking evil looking and just kind of majestically badass. Yeah, majestically badass. I said that. Rip everyone's money, right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Okay. Anyways, um, but yeah, effect, uh, or essentially, that's the patch. Um, really not a ton in it. Mostly the Hallowing Abyss changes. We do have some good item changes in this patch. Um, I don't know what your guys' favorite parts or changes are to this patch, but if you have a say, let me know. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much the patch. I am a big fan of the Corky changes. And I'm a big fan of the IE Essence Reaver, D Lord Dom's, and Mortal Reminder changes. Big fan of those ones. Kind of like the Fizz changes too, because I kind of get tired of him, him a lot. Syndras are fine too. Really, all the changes. Man, there's really nothing bad happening in this patch. There's a not a lot happening. Actually, here's the part where I said I'd talk a little bit about why I think this patch is the way it is. So I think, in some cases, this patch is slightly less heavy on Summoner's Rift changes for a couple reasons. And maybe I'm just reaching for some changes, but here's a couple. So one, at the end of last year, or during the middle, or around this part of last year, we had big juggernaut changes come into play. And then they came out pretty much right before Worlds. Granted, we're not right before Worlds yet, but we're getting to a point where a meta is gonna start to be defined, and that's what will probably move somewhat into Worlds. I don't think they're gonna have these massive changes like they did last year, which changed the meta right before Worlds. It caught a lot of teams off guard in some cases, and there was a lot of bitching and moaning from casters and from some players about these drastic changes that have changed the game and it's too hard for people to catch up, blah, blah, blah. So I think they're going to tweak and hone in things as the rest of this split goes on, get ready and prep their changes for the off season too, which obviously that's way, way far out. Um, but that's one of the reasons why we're not, maybe we won't get tons of huge, huge changes, but who knows? Maybe this was just like a little break and them focusing on, um, Howling Abyss. The other reason I don't think there are lots and lots and lots of changes coming in this patch, um, so because another game has come out called Overwatch, a lot of League people find a connection to that game because it's fairly competitive and it's, it is a good game. I've been playing a lot of it, um, but Overwatch... So people who jumped from League to take a short break, or however long they are, and are jumping over to Overwatch, I think also Riot recognizes that we can't, we shouldn't make a ton of changes that make it difficult for people to jump back into League of Legends. So taking a break at changing lots of champions and just tweaking things that need tweaked and not doing huge, huge updates, I think that's another big reason this patch is smaller because we're a few weeks into Overwatch. So some people are coming back to League a little bit more now. They're playing less Overwatch overall and they're playing, you know, maybe they're playing some more League again. Or if they're going to play Overwatch for a month or two and then come back to League, um, then, you know, then the changes won't be as drastic. They won't feel as left behind and then they won't feel like they have to stop playing League. Granted, I don't think they would anyways, but this just makes it easier for anybody who is doing that. So... I'm not saying that this is a small patch because of Overwatch, but I do think that is part of it. Badger, do you think the Juggernaut update was a success? At the time, I thought it was mostly successful. They were blatantly overpowered, though. That was a problem. I don't know how some of that got through. Um, it did affect Worlds a little too much, but I was fine with them updating it. The game does constantly shift. People should always be ready for that. Um, but this patch, once again, I think a little bit, maybe because of the Overwatch stuff, the E3 ha hype and everything happening currently. So... Riot kind of hones down things just a little bit to say, hey, let's keep everything right where we need it. Um, and we'll see how that goes. They are playing less Overwatch overall. Yeah, I know a lot of people have already kind of stopped playing Overwatch, actually. Um, Overwatch is a fun game, though. I mean, if you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, then you like it. I mean, you can't... You don't have to just like one game. It's the stupidest concept in the world. Um, you can play multiple games. I always play multiple games. That's just how it works. But that's one of the reasons why I think this patch is kind of the way it is. So, you can let me know in the comments whether or not you think it is part of that reason, or if that makes sense to you. 
Um, if you have a brain, that probably actually makes some sense to you. If you don't and you just hate the world because you're angry, then I have bad for news for you. COD isn't out for a while. Anyways, um, but yeah, that's pretty much the patch. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. If you watched it live, if you could leave me a like, that would be flipping fantastic. I would appreciate it. Um, I hope all of you have a fantastic evening as well, Depend and have fun playing League or whatever game you may or may not be playing. Um, but other than that, that is the patch notes, and I'll see all of you guys next time. Bye-bye.